this one seems to be alive. What a lucky guy. At least death would have saved him from the dreams. This is the dressing room job. It's good. E easily it's good. Professional standard. I bid you welcome, or welcome back. Around this time of the year we celebrate an ancient holiday known by many names. Some call it Halloween or All Hallows Eve or the Day of the Dead. And on this most sacred holiday... Uh, wait for a second... I can explain that. First of all, that intro segment that you just saw, well, that was originally meant to play uh, in the first video after a longer absence from me, after months of absence, but uh, then the unthinkable happened and out of nowhere, videos just started appearing on my channel. And uh, now it uh, doesn't hit that hard. I prefer it this way though, but still. The second thing is, it's February. And uh, I'm making a Halloween video right now. And uh, now this year's, I mean 2023's whole season and my work on the pieces along with my mental uh, state wasn't going that well. So originally I postponed this video to October and then to November and then to December and then I decided to get a new microphone and I decided that, okay, those few extra weeks are not gonna make a difference. So I made uh, a few other videos to just test it out effectively before jumping into this one. But we are here to dive into the 2023 Halloween project that I made. I followed a prompt list made by the artist Meb Graves. The name of the challenge is Drawloween, named after the Inktober challenge. And this one is a Halloween themed one. Every year Meb makes a prompt list of 31 somewhat Halloween related prompts. And then this was my fourth year participating. And each time I did, I came up with something new for the entire challenge. In 2020, I only made pieces from the prompt list. And I only ended up completing 23 of them. In 21, I animated my pieces with uh, really simple little effects. Then in 22, I edited all of them into one giant picture in the end. Now, it was 2023 and I wanted to make something new again. So I made... 31 made up tarot cards and the only thing uh, left for me to do about that uh, is uh, also editing them together into one giant piece but more about that later and let's see the cards number one spooky self-portrait. The challenge started with a self-portrait. Now both last year and the year before contained one self-portrait, so I was expecting that this year will also have one as well. But regardless, I started working on a self-portrait not long before the prompt list was published. I didn't record a live commentary for my project at any point, knowing it will just not work in the video by any means, especially how all the recordings were more than 110 hours all combined, and it would have been a nightmare to edit it together if I had any sort of live commentary, but I have some for this one because I didn't even know if it will be part of the Halloween project or not, but I still had my old microphone so the sound quality will dip a little bit for now, for about two minutes, then we are back with the proper sound. I should be holding my pen in my hand so it looks more authentic. Okay, hi, welcome or welcome back. I, I literally have no idea how <laughs> to start to explain what you see on the screen. I made some self portraits before and this might be the most unhinged so far. Oh, I, sh I forgot to turn on this thing. I was, I had this idea in my mind for some time that I just wanted to make a picture of myself as a decapitated head on, on just a trash pile. I'm pretty sure that uh, many of you have this issue with procrastination pieces when you just do something in order to procrastinate on something that you should be doing. Yeah, this is one of those. I still have no idea what I'm going to do with this picture or if I will like turn this into a proper video or something. I should because it sounds like an awesome time. <laughs> and like, you know, how, how many self-portraits, like decapitated head self-portraits, have you seen on YouTube being made by people like zero? 
one with this one included now I just gave myself a reason to release this as a video so I just happened to have a mirror with me here it was like actually my mother's uh, makeup mirror that's why it's uh, like a like a nice pink mirror I was like ha pink mirror give that to me now it really comes handy I actually never tried making a self portrait like this but I don't know it just feels so so nice to actually look at myself and I can do all sorts of faces like in the mirror <laughs> and I can just use that as a reference. As I mentioned I made multiple self-portraits for this challenge over the years. I actually made one for each year so far and I really like all of them for different reasons but this one I just say that this one is my favorite. It just comes together so nicely and even if this isn't the most accurate, I just like this the most. I'm not sure I would have been able to make something so gruesome of myself even just a year ago. I especially like the fact how unique it feels to me. Many people make self-portraits of many kinds but I can't say anyone from the top of my head, no pun intended, who made something like this. Maybe Caravaggio who made the David and Goliath picture which is actually a self-portrait of him self which I also parodied by the way as a Ray Skywalker slash Ben Solo piece and I even got temporarily banned from the Raylo subreddit for this but I'll, I'll make a video about that one day. But yes I love how the maggots and flies turned out they just make the whole piece come to life and also the dripping saliva and all that just just amazing I have no idea how this might sound to someone who is just hearing me talk for the first time but yes I love my own missing head self-portrait and nobody can do anything about it. Okay this is day two of the project I just wanted to say this. I still have a few things to fix on this image. I woke up with the intention that I'm going to just switch into full laser focus mode and I'm going to finish this and I will start working on the others so so I made the conscious and responsible decision to make this charcoal drawing of Karloff the proportions are a little bit off but I like the expression moving on the border itself is nothing special this was the point when I figured out how I want it to look it's like a combination of a few fantasy tree roots and it has a few spider webs and lanterns and the little frame that has the name of every card has uh, this uh, little bat wing motif I'm glad it turned out the way it did. Number 2. Which. Now before I get into this topic I have to mention something. I will still make a whole video about this topic but uh, for some pieces in this series I decided to use parts of my older pictures. I did try this method out on a quick Wednesday picture where I used parts of some older pieces to build up most of the character and it does have some drawbacks. I'll get into that in a video but uh, let's see this year's witch first. I included Luna Lovegood in the 2021 series and Hermione Granger last year but this time I really wanted to bring back Luna. I actually talk about this uh, all the time if you've seen some of my other videos but Luna is my favorite fictional character and you can say whatever you want about it. I made many pieces of her, she's literally sitting above my head in the video like in most videos and even from the very first concept of this project she was there right next to me. Earlier this year I remade a picture of her from 2020 and I used it as a base for this one. I did fix some things for just this project alone with the face and it's overall better but I just uh, somehow feel that the original felt more like Luna if that makes sense but I still like this one. I combined two prompts in a sense where the cat creature I placed on her shoulder received its own picture after some rework. I actually reused ideas from a self portrait I wanted to make at one point where I wanted to be both a Frankensteinian monster and have that Nosferatu looking cat on my shoulder myself but this felt fitting for Luna. I changed uh, much of the expression and made her uh, look at the viewer with a mostly concerning and judging look on her face. This will be more important when I pull all the pieces together and uh, there's not much else to say about this one other than I wanted to give Luna a special place in the picture. Number 3. 
Vercat. As I said a moment ago, the cat creature received a standalone picture. I modified it quite a bit, turning the head around, moving the limbs and the tail, giving it a unique background too. I made the features of the cat resemble Count Orlok, of course, who was part of every year's series so far and just uh, had to be included somehow. A little side note, I'm pretty sure I talked about it before, but the movie Nosferatu itself is public domain now, you can watch it for free on YouTube. There are even multiple versions of the movie, and if you haven't seen it, I know it's black and white silent movie from 1922, but just go and give it a watch, it has such a unique and creepy atmosphere, you can just... You can't just not love it in the end. My Nosferatu cat uh, received the iconic shadow, of course. You can't just make something like this and not place it there. This one is nothing special and I'm afraid it's true for uh, way too many pieces from this year. But on the upside, just come on. You would pet this nice kitty anyway. Don't you lie about it. Number 4 Vampire. Now, for this one, I wanted to use a more unique workflow, mainly inspired by how Marco Bucci and Aaron Griffin work. I picked up some of my Insanity brushes and carved out the form of Lucy Westenra from the other classic, Bram Stoker's Dracula. We all know it, we all love it, and Lucy walking in the cemetery in the wedding dress she was buried in needs no explanation. I would like if I said that there was any meaning behind why I made this one piece with this one workflow. Really I just wanted to make a nice looking wedding dress with a nice looking long hair and it was almost a compromising uh, solution to make this image not fully rendered and precise but messy and expressive. This workflow, I like it but I feel like I'm not as good in it as I would want to and the results do look good, I mean when I don't mess it up, at least at the surface level and uh, these do fit the idea of the series of mainly not overwork the concept heavy pieces. Unfortunately, they just can't compare with my fully rendered pieces for me. I like this method if I actually just start with this and it can be surprisingly helpful, but I have to say that this one became one of the attempts where I actually managed to make something with it that I liked in the end. I'm not sure if anyone really would like to see so much experimentation in an actual tarot deck, but uh, for the fun project this was a really nice change of pace from picture to picture and it kept me invested more in the whole thing. Number 5. Haunted. Somehow I haven't made an image of the Hetman. I was reminded by the existence of this urban legend through the whole uh, Benadryl situation. I'd rather not go into details about it, let's just say that uh, there's an entire uh, community of addicts who treat this guy as a meme slash maybe something more than a meme. I heard about this character many times and I find it fascinating. I even watched a few videos about him on YouTube while working on this image. If you somehow still don't know who the Hatman is, he's mostly known as a famous shadow person, not a ghost but some sort of ghost-like entity that people claim to have seen. And it's not like Slenderman, I just realized I never painted Slenderman before, I uh, need to collect that in the foreseeable future, but unlike this Slenderman which is much more of a fun creepypasta character with a few exceptions, for many people the Hatman is actually an urban legend that they believe in. Part of my idea behind this picture came from someone on YouTube saying that uh, they would draw the scene when they saw him but they can't draw so they could only find the artistic rendition they found to be the closest and I wanted to make this picture pretty bare bones, no proper rendering, no perspective and no real showcase of any fundamentals. I wanted this picture to look like as if someone made it who is not an artist, someone who just asked me to show how Krita works and made this picture themselves. I like to think I succeeded in that regards and it feels like the most authentic rendition of the character. Number 6. 
botanical beasts. Okay, this was the one that I postponed over and over again until it ended up being the one I completed last. I was really intimidated by the technical aspect of using a lot of perspective on this one and making a prop instead of something mostly organic. Then it ended up uh, much more fun than I anticipated. What we have here is a werewolf bite first aid kit. I included some instructions inside the case that explain explain how to use this thing, but the quick rundown is the case contains a special hot pepper that is somewhat capable of killing the lipcanthropy virus in the first stage of the infection. I mean if the victim is strapped down and you force feed them with the pepper of course. It was inspired by the fake Victorian vampire killing kits. I saw these things uh, showcased uh, in a video by Kaz Rowe. They are a historian uh, video essayist who mostly focuses on either strange things from history, queer things from history, and the combination of both sometimes. Also, they don't exaggerate many stories for entertainment purposes and mostly debunked many myths, including ones about the real life vampire hunting lore. I'm looking at you, pawn stars, who featured one of these as if it was a real antique item. Nonetheless, these kits as uh, art pieces on their own are really amazing and I wanted to make something like these, just not with a vampire theme. Then the idea for this first aid kit came to me and I wanted to make it. Also between coming up with the idea and actually making the piece, I learned that hot peppers don't actually cause any harm to viruses. Don't quote me on that one, but uh, in case uh, that is the truth, we could say that the item on my piece is essentially a placebo, accidentally giving some extra dimension to this piece. Number 7. Fairy. Back in 2022, I participated in this challenge by Back to Drawing on Instagram. The task was to make a fairy, any kind of fairy, so I decided to create this original character, the Night Fairy. She's a nocturnal fairy who has bat wings and is friends with all repulsive creatures like spiders. Now the original is a bit dated for many reasons, so I wanted to rework it. I changed the pose into a less interesting one, but I wanted to focus on making the character itself look nice. I reworked the limbs and the whole head to make them look much better. Unfortunately, this is the first one I don't have many things to say about. I'll just say while I reworked the limbs and the head, I just barely touched the torso and the wings. I really like this spiderweb clothing with the little black widow on it and I wanted to keep it, so I just changed the shading a little bit on that part and I rotated the wings around so they can fit into all the portrait mode 4x5 ratio of the card without moving the whole character too far from the viewer or cutting off the sides of the wings. Number 8 Mushroom. I was more lost on this one than on any other. I knew I wanted to make some sort of mushroom creature, but the idea was pretty much hearted there. Now that I think about it, it could have been about certain mushrooms having an effect on the human mind, but I wasn't thinking about that kind of stuff at the time, and I just started the messy painting method with crazy brushes to see where it goes. From a cutish big mushroom creature, it quickly became a bipedal monster-like thing you see in the final piece. I just wanted to make something like the creepy designs of skinwalkers slash wendigos, the two creatures the internet gave an identity crisis, or just more uh, gorilla-like, insert a joke about cool in here, with the long arms and shorter back legs. I also combined the top of the mushroom with a carnivorous plant with a lot of teeth and an actually menacing looking long tongue, possibly one of the most overdone horror creature tropes. Actually this whole character feels like an overdone horror trope collection. After some of the crazy brushes I used some of my regular ones and some less chaotic watercolor like brushes from Krita to just define some parts of the body more. Overall I'll call this an okay picture with some missed potential and a bit too many cliches. Number 9 Finfolk. Okay, hear me out, we are in a downward spiral right now, but not for long. 
I don't think this one might be the weakest one from the entire 2023 series, at least from a technical standpoint. I modified my Axolotl mermaid from early 2023 and I turned it into an underwater cave merman. The design was uh, based on bats once again, but I feel like this time I really rushed it. I gave him big ears, that interesting nose that insect eating bats have, red uh, big irises with big pupils, and I changed the shape of the fin into the shapes of bat wings. It is definitely not awful, but I just feel like I didn't put enough effort into this one. Since I reused so many parts of a previous piece, it should have been going much better, but I kinda discovered that beyond struggling to make your new pieces look stiff with this method, maybe your heart is just not that much in it, therefore uh, you just don't put as much effort into a design it would deserve, at least that's how I kept feeling about this one. Passable picture, it has some nice elements, I don't completely hate the atmosphere, and uh, we also have a cute anglerfish. Nothing more to say about this, so let's continue with a much better piece. Number 10 pumpkin. Continuing on a much more positive note, for the third time I made this somewhat original character I have. Somewhat original, yes. <laughs> I just fully say it out, this design is much more of a combination of Freddy Krueger, the Headless Horseman and Ghost Rider than anything even remotely original. I still don't have a proper name for this character, I just say that uh, he was killed on Halloween Eve and every year he gets to be resurrected until sunrise as a pumpkin that grows an entire body and then grabs his uh, old shotgun to seek revenge on the people who killed him. I remade my 2020 picture of this character, just a half body portrait posing with a weapon, but this time I I wanted a more dynamic pose and some perspective and finer details. I reused a pumpkin from an earlier American Horror Story fan art I made in August for the head, but the rest was made from scratch and I also really reworked uh, the way the pumpkin itself looks, so it's not just a copy paste. The only thing I uh, really think I couldn't capture was the expression of the 2020 piece. It's just so savage looking with so much anger, just a real menace that can be matched, and the new one looks uh, more like a mischievous anti-hero who can't compete with the original but will still sure do his best and beyond. Also, I have a feeling I'm slowly getting into the mindset on how to paint both much better looking fire and fabric at the same time. These were two things that I've been struggling with a lot, but this struggle uh, I would say is less visible on this one. Number 11 web. Here we go, something more personal for me than many of the other pieces from this series. This is a fan art of the character named uh, the Black Widow by Boro Dante, also known as uh, Boro CG or Daniel Sherekin. See, he was one of my biggest mentors when I started out. I'd literally not be here if it wasn't for his videos. I call my main series on this channel Let's Paint videos to pay my respect to his format. He still makes some uh, 2D concept art videos sometimes, uh, but his uh, main thing is game development and has been for a few years now, which is something I respect and I'm glad he's doing what he wants. I just miss the new Borodante painting videos. That whole series just shaped me in more ways than one. The Black Widow, which is uh, one of his creations, was the result of an entire series of uh, videos across multiple years on his channel when he wanted to make the best image of this character possible and started it over multiple times and you can still go to his channel and find a series uh, to watch through multiple versions of this piece. Most of his videos are unlisted but you can still find them in the playlists on the channel. Literally that series is one of my favorite pieces of media of all time without any exaggeration. Just seeing how multiple versions get created, go off rail, then Borrow would explain what are the issues with it and how he wants to make a better version and does it 
every single time, fleshing the piece out more and more and makes it better and better. I made my version of the character somewhat inspired by Bellatrix Black from the Harry Potter franchise, the version of the character who is not evil, who was just kinda created by the fandom itself. I know it sounds weird, but if you know the fandom, you know what I am talking about. So I wanted my Black Widow to be less of a monster and more of a likable character. It was also highly based on my 2020 piece of Hermione and Pennywise together that I made as a fanfiction book cover for someone. And I like how this one turned out. It's in my top 10 for this year for sure. Number 12. Toad. I changed my mind mid script writing and I won't go back. This is my least favorite from the collection. I went with combining an axolotl and a toad and I grabbed features from both creatures like the eyes and the head shape is from a toad while the gills and the tail are from an axolotl. I wanted to make an old and monk-like character who lives in a swampland as a hermit wearing some simple outfit while being surrounded by nature. I added some red stripes for the ropes to make them resemble amphibians more, especially salamanders because those guys just uh, always seem to have some stripes. I also added a big stripe to the middle of the head as well to make it more interesting. Now that I look at it, I really wanted to make the skin look wet and I didn't really manage to do that. And the same goes with it being translucent. It just ended up as dull and uninteresting. Maybe an hour or two of work on it would help, but you know, there are many pieces that would benefit from an extra hour and I'd rather spend that on something better. The damage on the robe is fine, but uh, they are really evenly placed and repeating. I feel like I've been just adding this one tearing pattern everywhere without really thinking about it. So it could have been much better, but at the same time I once again wasn't really feeling this one. So it just ended up as another one of these uh, okay pieces for the series. Number 13. Frankenstein. I'll go ahead, pun intended once again, <laughs> I'll go ahead and say that Frankenstein's monster is easily my favorite monster of all time. No wonder I made so many pieces with the whole Frankenstein team, I'm even working on a new one while editing this video. And also, remember what I said about this self-portrait in the first one? Yes, insert that whole segment here because it's an extension of that piece. I wanted to make uh, one card with the Frankenstein's monster character with its head missing and then edit my head on it in the final version. But then I ended up liking the version with my head on just much more. The one without the head will still be the official version of this one. Uh, regardless of that, I just feel like uh, this is the complete version of my self-portrait too. The environment is a bit underwhelming, but the character ended up much better than I expected. My favorite detail in the picture is uh, the vomit on the shirt. And funny story, I was looking at pictures and videos of people vomiting, <laughs> including on themselves. So long I was uh, starting to feel nauseous myself, but I found that the one detail that makes the vomit on the shirt much more realistic and gross is how there is wetness around the solid pieces. Without the shirt being soaked, they just look like little dry pieces, but if you want to make it really gross, you just need to need the wetness around it. I also made some of the vomit go under the shirt, which is so disgusting. That's my, that's my favorite part. You can just feel it flowing down your chest right now. And there's the torn apart clothing with dried blood on it. And the body parts are just sewn together and they are still like open wounds to an extent and that there are fingers partially missing like you can just smell this picture <laughs> it's just like sitting at the same table as me on a regular day number 14 got moth. This one is special for a whole other reason. On one hand, yes, this is uh, the rework 
of a picture from last year, but also this version of the character is based on the YouTube musician Nancy Kepner. Her channel is called Heartfelt Humor, and she makes goofy but incredibly heartfelt songs, mostly centered around fandom culture, but often those are a framework for a deeper meaning. I actually sent this picture to her and she was really kind and glad to receive it. I actually made uh, one piece in 2021 based on one of her songs too and I got a really amazing reaction for that one as well. And I didn't ask her about this but I'll go ahead and make the guess that it would be okay. So I'll put this in here. She often does improvised songs on live streams and uh, picked one of my suggestions last time which was the late with the Halloween art project song and I decided to insert it right here. It felt to be the most perfect way to present this piece. Enjoy and check out Nancy's channel. Are there any topics people want me to try to improv a song about? Um, did anything weird happen to people on Halloween? What did everyone do for Halloween? Late with a Halloween art project. I mean, I was very close to being late with the Halloween video. All right, all right. Gonna do late with Halloween art real quick, and then I'll, I'll get to some of these others. project for weeks I thought the timing was super appropriate <laughs> cause nothing inspires spooky art more than Halloween but Number 15, Reaper. After all the fun, we have a darker piece for the last one in this video. I wasn't sure where I was going with this when I started, but uh, it started evolving along the way and became a new original character by the end. I still don't have a name for them either. I'm thinking about Grim, but I'm uh, still not sure. I decided to make this character intentionally an ambiguous gender and later now I will call them non-binary with they-them pronouns. Partially inspired by many works of Axelis Rose, 
whose name I mispronounced last time and only wrote a comment about it, so I'd like to officially apologize for that one. This character is the child of the Grim Reaper, who had to become the new Grim Reaper at one point despite not wanting to. So they experience immense grief over every person they need to take, but uh, decided to carry on so they can strike down the evil people and uh, take all the innocent and unjustly killed to a better place as well. I turned this site into a rose, I might change it uh, to another flower in the future if I make another piece of this character. I'm not sure how to supplement the thorns of the rose uh, that are uh, placed on the handle, but my prediction is uh, making some other flower motifs or maybe combining multiple flowers uh, would be the way to go. I say this piece has many errors, especially with anatomy, I'll let you speak spot the issues if you want to find them, and I found the hair being so straight and bundled to together to be way too uninteresting. I really like the idea and the character more than the execution once again, but this one is just closer to me than the others uh, that were suffering from similar issues to carry the piece properly. And with that we arrive to the halfway point of the project, at least to the showcase of the cards. See, I decided to have these broken into two parts, showing 15 in the first episode and the rest in the second. I'm starting to work on uh, that one too, right after this video is finished, so stay excited for that one as well. Both of you who are watching this far. <laughs> Then I will do a third video where I will edit all these together into one piece. I already have the plans, I know more or less what, he, what I want it to be, but it will be another huge stretch until it will be done, and it will be a huge stretch until I edit this video together finally. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Have a nice day. Create something, even if it involves months of procrastination, but most importantly, don't forget to have fun while doing that. Farewell. Whew, this script at the end of the first episode of the tree is now 4400 words long across eight and a half pages, and I kept it as bare bones as I could. You know, nine videos like this, and that would literally qualify as a novel. <laughs> Let's go.